Here we have a very typical question regarding conic sections, specifically parabolas. Uh, basically what they do is they give us the equation of a parabola, then they ask us all the usual information that we can find about this parabola, like what is its focus, what's its vertex, what's its directrix, and all those good things. Um, maybe we'll even graph this at the end. So if you're not familiar with these terms, you might want to go back and watch our video on parabolas and conic sections. But um, we're, we're going to assume that we understand what, what all these terms mean here. So basically this boils down to remembering the basic template, the basic setup of the formula for a parabola. It's one of two formulas. It's either x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k, and that's if the parabola opens upwards or downwards. The way I remember this is you roughly have y equals x squared, y equals x squared, which as I well know opens upward. Um, so that's what reminds me that the first one opens up or down. And the second one is y minus k squared equals 4p times x minus h. Now looking at our formula, I think it's pretty clear that ours is the first one because the x is squared and not the y. So it's pretty clear that ours is this first formula here. So if that's the case, then we should also remember the vertex is at the point hk, the directrix is at the, uh, is the line y equals k minus p, and the focus is the point h comma k plus p. Now, I totally understand somebody might be watching this video and think to themselves, how am I supposed to remember all that? Well, um, you could do this different ways. One is just straight memorization. You can just memorize these two formulas and whatever the H, the K, and the P are, you can write the vertex and the directrix and the focus and be done with it. Um, to be honest with you, that's not really the way I do it, but it can be done that way. I just find that that's a lot to memorize. Uh, the way I do these is a lot more of an intuitive approach, just thinking about where the vertex is and what the directrix looks like and that sort of thing. And so I'll, I'll unpack that, some of that going forward. Okay, so let's look at our guy. And let's see, can we read off, for instance, like the vertex? Um, X plus 5 and a Y minus 1. I think our vertex would be at negative 5 comma 1 because that's our X minus H. Our H is negative 5 since it's got to be a minus H negative five comma one for the vertex. Let's jot some of these things down. The vertex is at negative five comma one. All right, let's see. How about the directrix? Well, the K value is one. Now, what if, what's the value for P? What's P? Well, I know that this term right here is supposed to be four P. So if 4p equals 8, if 4p equals 8, then that must imply that p is 2. Right, p is 2. All right, so we have, uh, let's see, what was our formula? We had y equals k minus p. Well, our k was 1 and our p was 2. So our directrix will be at y equals negative 1. y equals negative 1. And then uh, lastly, the focus, we're going to take our vertex point hk, negative 5, 1, and add p to the y value instead of subtracting p. So it would be negative 5, comma, 3. That's 1 plus 2. So negative 5, comma, 3 is the focus right, the focus okay so uh, let's take these things and see if we can now construct a graph this is the majority of our answer this is what we were asked about but since we have all this let's just go ahead and practice graphing these as well okay so let's start with the vertex and let me kind of point out some things as we go so negative five negative five comma one okay all right um, that we should be able to tell just from the equation very, very quickly, negative five comma one. But from here, he, here's, here's how I approach these problems. Uh, once you know the P value, once you know that four P equals eight, and so P is two, 
I remember that P is the distance that the focus is away from the vertex. And so let's think about this guy. Because I know that this guy opens up or down without any formulas, just realizing that it's Y equals X squared basically, then the directrix either has to be above negative five or below negative five. But it's gotta be one of those two if the parabola is gonna open up or down. If the directrix was on, let's say this side here, um, and then the you know the focus was let's say right here then the parabola would have to open left to right so I know that's not the case so now the only question is is the directrix above this point or below the vertex and for that let's just again just think generally just use our intuition just about this parabola um, you have y minus 1 times 8 equals x plus 5 squared. Okay, so uh, what's going to dictate whether it opens up or down is the coefficient uh, sign, basically. Is it positive? Is it negative? The plus 5 doesn't affect it opening up or down. The minus 1 doesn't affect it opening up or down. Whether 8, however, is positive or negative is going to dictate if it opens up or down. If it was negative y, it opened down. If it was positive y, it would open up. Ours is positive, indicating our parabola is going to open upwards, you know, through this vertex right here. Okay, which means the directrix must be below the vertex, so it must be down here. But down below the vertex by how much? Two units, right? Two units because that was our p value. Okay, so we'll go down two units from one. Okay, so we'll be down here, not at one, not at zero, but at negative one. Now in hindsight, this is perfect because look, what was our directrix? It was negative one, but I didn't use any fancy formula. I just used our intuition, All right? And the last thing is, what about the focus? Well, the focus on the other hand is the same distance away from the directrix, but on the opposite side. So not below negative 5, 1, but above negative 5, 1. Um, how far? Again, two units. So we'll go up one, two units. Notice it keeps the same x coordinate because the parabola opens up or down. The focus isn't going to be off kilter left or right. It's just going to be above or below the vertex. And sure enough, the focus was in fact at negative five, three. So you can do this with the formulas or just by your intuition. Sometimes I trust my intuition a little bit more um, just thinking about uh, what this equation is telling me about the focus and the directrix and that sort of thing. So once you have the focus, once you have the directrix, uh, you plot all those and then the, um, the parabola will go through the vertex We'll go through the vertex, bending away from the directrix and around the focus, almost like a satellite dish, if you will. Now, the last little nuance thing, which it, it, most instructors will just ask you for a sketch of the parabola, but if we're being formally correct, somehow we have to differentiate between this parabola that does what we want it to and this wider one or perhaps this narrower one. So how, how do we do that exactly? Well, basically it has a lot to do with how close the focus is to the vertex. If the focus was very far away, it would be very uh, flat. If the focus was very close to the vertex, it would be very narrow. Um, if you want something more concrete than that, um, all you have to do is just go back to the basic formula here and then plug in an X and solve for the Y just to get one additional point. And so like for this one here, let me take away all this gibberish right here. Let's say you took an X, you plugged it in, you got a Y, and then it came out a specific point, let's say like right here. Well, then that would give you a feel for how narrow or how wide to draw your parabola. And that's, that's usually the safest route is just to do one X, Y point just to get a feel for, you know, is it very, very wide or very, very narrow. So uh, anyway, hope, hopefully that helps you understand um, the focus and the directrix and the vertex a little bit better and how to read that information off of a given equation.